studying Algebra 2, 5-5, complex numbers and roots. Okay? First thing you need to know is an imaginary unit. Okay? An imaginary unit refers to essentially an imaginary number, which is I. You can crack that code. I is the first letter in imaginary. Something imaginary doesn't exist. So, when you'll see I, that is the equivalent of radical negative 1. Alright? So, why is that imaginary? A radical. That means what times itself equals this number? Radical 4. What times itself equals 4? 2. two. So 2 is the equivalent of radical 4. Alright? I is the, is the equivalent of radical negative 1 because what times itself can equal a negative? Yeah. Nothing. So anytime you have a negative under the radical, you're going to have to do an imaginary number to get it out. Okay? Now, what is the purpose? Where do we see it in math? When you have um, a parabola, usually when you find the x's, that's where it crosses the x-axis, correct? That's mm -hmm. find its zeros, its roots, whatever you want to call it. Correct. Now, whenever you have this parabola and it doesn't cross the x-axis, well... That's where imaginary numbers come in. Because what you're going to do is you're going to find the unreal roots. Usually you find the real roots. That's where it crosses the x-axis. You have to find the unreal roots, which is where, essentially, I guess it would cross the x-axis. Does that make sense? You're finding out its formula for its root, even though it doesn't have a root. Hence the imaginary, because it doesn't exist. Getting more complicated, I apologize. What you need to take out of this is I equals radical negative 1. Okay? Let's do some examples. Okay? Let's say you have... 3 radical negative 16. Okay? Now, we know radical 16 would be 4. 4 times 4. Now, the problem is we've got a negative in there. So, what we do is just like whenever we do simplifying the radical, you know how we split it up? Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, if you had radical of um, 12, you would split that up to radical 4, radical 3, and then you would solve them separately. Radical 4 is 2, and then you'd be done. Okay, we can split it up as long as whenever we multiply it back together, it equals the original. That means we're not changing the problem. Well, on this one, what would you do? We would split negative 16 up to radical negative 1 and radical 16. Radical 16 is easy. What is that? 4. four. Radical negative 1. That's, <coughs> there's no possible answer for that. So what we do is we put on no. I. So now I'm going to replace that right there with 4i. So 3 times 4i, 3 times 4 is 12. So your answer would be 12i. Okay? Let's do one without me explaining it so I can show how easy it is. Are we explaining it to you? No, I'll explain it. It doesn't matter. Um, let's do 2. Let's do radical negative 12. Okay? We can split that up into radical 4, Actually, let's split it one time, and then we'll split it again. Sorry. We got radical 12, radical negative 1. What do we know a radical negative 1 becomes? Ah. Ah. Radical 12, I can split into? 4 and 3. Radical 4, radical 3. That's 2. Radical 3. And then we're going to put the I. We could put the I there, but we don't want to confuse it and people think, oh, that's under the radical. No. We want, it to, we want people to know that we've turned this into an I. Therefore, there's no radical. So we'll move it right here. Okay? So... 2i uh, radical 3. And you're done. Okay? Simple. Do one more. I love these. Yeah, they're the best. So good. Okay. Um, let's try negative radical negative 32. What? Okay? That's not That negative, we're just going to let it chill. It's essentially negative 1 times that whole thing. Okay. So let's split radical. 8, 4. 8 and 4. Okay? So let's do that. Is there an easier one we could do that would skip some steps? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just go 8 and 4 and we'll see what happens. Okay? So you split it up into 8, 4, and what else? Negative i. Negative i. <coughs> negative 1. And that negative's still there. Now what happens with this? It becomes... 4, 2. i. I'm bringing this down. Oh. It becomes i. Okay. What does radical 4 become? 2. I'm going to put it right there. That's still radical 8. Can we simplify radical 8 any? 4 and 2. Yep. Radical 4 and radical 2, which that is 
negative 2 i times 2 times radical 2. What's 2 times 2? You are completed. Okay? Cool, cool, cool. cool now, let's do complex numbers. Alright, a complex number. That means that you have a regular number, A, and in this section is considered your imaginary number. That's because it has an I. You have a regular number, plus or minus another number with an I. Or it could just, you know, it could be like one I, so it would just look like an I. Make sense? For instance, um, 12 plus 3I. That's a complex number because it has regular or real, real number, imaginary number. Okay. Um, one minus I. Real number, negative one, uh, that's imaginary. Okay? Uh, see if you need anything past that. No. It's a number that can be written in the form A plus BI, where A and B are numbers, and the I is negative one. So that'll be a number, that'll be a number, and then you got an I. That's essentially it. I don't know what else to say past that point. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I hate to backtrack, but I want to do one example um, kind of based off the imaginary. Not complex, just imaginary. Let's say we have something like this. We got 3x squared plus 75 equals 0. And we want to solve this. Subtract 75. We divide by 3. And then what do we do to get rid of the, the square? Square root, right? Mm -hmm. So x equals radical negative 25. What will we do to solve that? Simplify. Simplify. Now, last section we learned that if we do something where we're solving for x, we've got to put plus or minus in front of that, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, let's solve it. What can we split that up to? You said five, five. radical negative 1 and radical 25, oh. which we can actually simplify both of those, can't we? Yes. Okay, plus or minus, what does that become? I five. Thank you. And what does that become? Five. Our answer is actually two answers. X can either be positive 5i or negative 5i. Okay? Cool, 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 cool. Now, let's go back to complex numbers. I apologize for doing that, but I just forgot and I wanted to say it. So, complex numbers. Um, Let's say you got 3x minus 5i equals 6 minus 10y. 10y? Yeah. Okay. Now, what we can do is, if we want to solve this, if it says, uh, it'll say, um, the phrase they use is equating two complex numbers. Okay? What you do is, you take your real numbers, which would be these two. They're real because they don't have I. And you would, sorry, I had to burp, it's on my head. You would take the real numbers, and you would set them equal to each other. You could solve it. Divide by 3, our x equals 2. All we do is we take our numbers that are in front of the I. We don't include the I, because essentially it would go away once we did it. So, negative 5 equals negative 10 y. And we would solve that, which we would just divide by negative 10, so 1 half equals y. Okay, because negative 5 divided by negative 10 would be 1 half. And so we found our x and our y. You don't see that very often. You use it in real life all the time by never using it ever. And uh, that's how you do that. Okay, that's called equating two complex numbers. Um, uh, last thing is a uh, complex conjugate. Say what? <sighs> complex conjugate. Um, the word conjugate, it, this isn't a difficult, I know it sounds complex because, well, it's part of its name. Um, I'll never talk through that again because that was creepy. Alright, all it means is you've got 2i minus 15. First thing I want you to do is I want you to put it like I just taught you um, in a complex number. That means put the 2i in the back which is positive 2i, and put the negative 15 in the front. Complex number. Check. All you got to do to do the con conjugate of this, switch the sign in front of the number with the i. So if this is this, 
its conjugate is negative 15 minus 2i. All I do is change the signs in front of the i. Sign it for the real number, say the same. Other one, change. Ch -ch 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 changes. Alright? Now, let's do one example and then I'll quit. How about um, negative 4i? <coughs> Complex conjugate. Or, yeah, let's find its conjugate. What's the real number? Zero, because it's not there. Okay, you don't have to write that, I'm just showing you. Now, its conjugate would be the same thing, you just change the sign in front of the i number. So it would be plus. positive 4i, which do we have to put plus 4i? No. no. So that is the conjugate of that. Yeah, it's not so easy. That's it. Super, super easy. Easy cheesy. And you're done. Cool, cool, cool. Did you hit that button, please? I'll hit that button. And.